Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to see a new topic in the area of random variable and probability distribution which is called the variance. A variance, the word itself kind of would indicate how much variation is there and that's really what it amounts to. It's a measure of how much variation there is in the numbers. Now variance can be calculated in several different ways. The one way in which we can calculate it is when we have what we call n equally likely values. So let's say in this case, our example shows that there's 10 values, 2, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 16, and 19. So there's 10 different values, and we assume that there's an equal probability that any of these values can occur. So in that case, we can calculate the variance as being equal to the sum of the value of each of those 10, subtract from that the average value of the 10, take that quantity, square it, sum it all up, and divide it by n, n being of course the total number of values. So that may seem a little bit like Greek to you, but that's okay for now, we'll go ahead and work it out, and then we'll try and understand a little bit more about what exactly that means. And then for comparison, I have a second set of numbers, we're also going to calculate the variance for these seven numbers, so you can see how the variance will be different for the two, and what that implies, what that really signifies. So first of all, we need to find the average or the mean. When you have an x with a little bar on top, that means the average value for these numbers. So in this case, we can say that the average value is equal to the sum of all the values divided by the total number, i equals 1 to n. So we're going to sum them all up. So in this case, when we sum them up, we go 2 plus 5, that's 7, that's 14, 22, uh, that would be 31, 41, 51, 52, 55, 65, 75, 81, 90, 100. So that's equal to 100 divided by 10 numbers, that's equal to 10. So the average value of those 10 numbers is equal to 10. Of course, I already knew that because I made up the numbers. All right, so now what we can do is we can now calculate the variance. So let me write it all out so you can see how to calculate that. So this would be equal to, we take the first value right here, that would be 2 minus the average, 10. We square that number, we add that to the next number, which is 5 minus 10. We square that number, plus 7 minus 10. We square that number, plus 8 minus 10. We square that number, plus 9 minus 10. Square that number, plus 10 minus 10. Square that number, plus... 11 minus 10 squared a number plus 13 minus 10 squared a number plus 16 minus 10 squared plus 19 minus 10 quantity squared. So we sum them all up and then we divide the whole thing by the total number that we have of numbers there, which is 10. Actually, to make it a little bit easier on yourself, what you could really do is, since you know what the average is, you know that 2 minus 10, uh, that would be minus 8, and then we square it, they get 8 squared, and the negative sign doesn't really matter since we're squaring all these differences. We could say, well, that's simply 8 squared plus 5 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared and plus 9 squared and the whole thing divided by 10. All right, so now we have to add all these up. So calculator probably comes in handy for this. So we have 64 plus 25, so 64 plus 25 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 36 and plus 81 equals, that's 230. Divided by 10, which is 23. So that's called the variance. Now you say, well, what does 23 signify? It's not that 23 has a particular meaning or value, but it does say that it's a big number relative to the average. So if this is a very big number relative to the average, you have a lot of variance. You have a lot of variation away from the average. Not only that, also notice that the outliers, numbers that are drastically different from the average, because 10 is the average, just calculated it, 
two is a very large difference from ten and so when you have numbers that are far away from the average and then you square that difference you get a really big number and you see that if the variance is big it can be caused by having some big outliers some numbers that are far away from the average so that the difference between the average and those numbers is a big number so that simply means that you probably have some outliers that are far away from the average now let's do it again for this set right here and what we're going to do is we're going to say the variance is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of the individual number minus the average quantity squared divided by the total number. Again, we need to find the average. And since I picked the numbers, I think I already know what the average is. But let's find out. That would be 11, 18, 26, 35, 45, 55, 57, 60, 70, 80, 84. That's 100. And so the average x bar is equal to the sum of all the x's divided by the number, that's 100, divided by 10 of them, which is an average of 10. So here also, I picked the numbers just right, so the average would be 10. So now again, we take the difference between the numbers, square it, add them together, and divide by n. So in this case, I'm going to skip all the way to this step right here. So this would be equal to 5 minus 10, that's 5, so that's 5 squared, plus 4 squared, plus 3 squared. Notice I just take the difference between 7 and the average is 3 and I square it, plus 2 squared, plus 1 squared, plus 0 squared, plus 2 squared, plus 3 squared, plus 4 squared, and plus 6 squared. And the whole thing divided by 10. Now adding them up, 25 plus 16, that's 41, plus 9 is 50, 54, 55, that would be 59, 68, 78, 84, and 36, 84, that's 90, that's 120. 120 divided by 10, which is equal to 12. Now notice the variance for the second set is 12, and the variance for the first set is 23, which means that the variance here was almost twice as large as the variance here. Now I said, well, wait a minute, why would it be twice as large? Because here also, there's quite a bit of variation. The numbers are quite a bit away from 10. But notice a few outliers like this number 2, which is different from 10 by 8, and this number 19, which is different from 10 by 9, will make a really big difference when we calculate the variance. Since those two big outliers do not exist in the second set, you can see how just having those two numbers differently, the variance looks a lot smaller. Again, the variance is simply a measure of how tight the numbers are together, close to the mean or the average, or how far away they are. Not as a general rule, but also are there any particular big outliers, numbers that are far away from the average, that will throw off your variance. So that's what we mean by variance. Now, in this case, it was relatively straightforward because the numbers that we were dealing with were a number, a set, where each number was equally likely to occur. It had the probability of occurring in the same for every one of the numbers, so equally likely, likely values that makes it easy. So this would be the equation to calculate the variance in this particular case. Now in the next video, we'll show you something where the numbers are not equally probable to occur, and so therefore, instead of using the average value, we'll have to use the expected value. So if you're interested in that, take a look at the next video, and we'll see how that works over there.